Well, here we go. Evolve Conversations uh, after Easter. I'm with uh, Curtis Christofferson from uh, here's in Vancouver right now. Um, we met uh, through MMT, an incredible community put together by Jason and Candice Gaynard. Um, we've also eaten cookies together. Yes, this is about health and fitness today. Um, why I brought Curtis onto this conversation is, yes, we've shared some pretty awesome times and some great conversations. I've been always invested in health and fitness and always intrigued by the future of and especially through this time of crisis curtis has kind of led the charge and and we'll talk about this on the call around pivoting he had uh he can tell the story but um he's had a number of brick and mortar businesses and how he pivoted so um thanks for joining me curtis really appreciate yeah. it man thanks for having me steve yeah so um let's talk about um innovate fitness and uh where you were and where you currently are and um yeah let's um, just share that with the audience and then we'll start chatting on from there yeah so we were you know obviously one of the lucky ducks that uh have been running a brick and mortar business and an in-person uh you know personal service business for the last 20 plus years and and uh when COVID-19 hit obviously impacted us you know not not necessarily more than anybody else but definitely a lot you know our our business is strictly based on in-person service. And, you know, when we're dealing with, you know, more than one location, we have 12 uh, brick and mortar locations. Um, you know, the minute that we close our doors is the minute that we don't produce revenue. So obviously, you know, huge amount of stress um, based on what COVID-19 has provided, you know, our business. And and uh, we had a couple of choices to make and, and, you know, we made some. So what did you feel through that um, time? And obviously we talked before the call about um, you did pick it up early and uh, and made some pretty ballsy decisions that um, before anyone else was even thinking this was going to be truly serious. And um, what were you feeling, man? Obviously building a business for 20 years on super individ individualized health and fitness programs that, as you said, most gyms work on a membership model month by month. You're like pay by service. So literally overnight, turned off and yeah. still fixed costs. So yeah, what were you feeling, man? Yeah, I mean, obviously there was a lot of fear, uncertainty, and and uh, I think, you know, genuinely we didn't, you know, want to accept what was, what was taking place early on. So beginning of March, like if I rewind, beginning of March, uh, you know, we were looking at, at obviously COVID-19 as a concern. Uh, we were aware what was happening in China, in Italy, in Spain. And, you know, we started trying to navigate our emotions and feelings of, how this was going to impact our business. And so, you know, to a point where March 11th, as, you know, as an example, which was Wednesday, we had sent out letters, formal letters to our landlords and our finance partners, like the, the, the large banks in Canada, and to, to, to inquire about relief or any kind of deferral. And the response was, you know, we haven't seen this yet. We, you know, this isn't a big deal. And so that alone told us that we were, you know, thinking ahead. And then sure enough, the 11th, Wednesday evening, Trump landed the planes to Europe or grounded the planes to Europe. Uh, the NBA had their incident. And then shortly thereafter, the Thursday, you saw the NHL, the NBA, Disneyland, other organizations take take a stance on this in terms of, you know, the large group gatherings. And, you know, we had to make some choices. So, you know, early on, as we talked about before the call, you know, we you know, we originally, the beginning of March, especially myself, like we, we talked about our model and how it's a personal service. It's not a high volume based gym. It's not a membership based gym and it's not a group class. So we thought, you know, if there was anybody that could open or stay open the longest, it would be us because we control the environment. We understand our clients' behaviors. We understand when they've traveled, if they're healthy, if they're not healthy. And so we thought, you know, at the end of the day, if this impacts us or when this impacts us, we'll probably be able to stay open the longest. And, you know, Sunday the 15th, that changed. You know, we we really looked at ourselves in the mirrors and, and said, you know, for over 20 years, we've prided ourselves on being leaders in this industry. And if we're going to be leaders and stand behind what we believe in, you know, we're going to believe in protecting the health of our teammates, our clients, and our communities. And we're going to participate in flattening the curve. So voluntarily, we close our doors on Sunday the 15th. And then from then on, we had some decisions to make. So yeah, I mean, it was a series of emotions and, and uh, you know, I, I think it was really hard to make that decision. But once we made it, I think it, you know, we leaned on our core values and it was the right call. 
how did you uh how did you bring the team together because obviously um having 13 locations or 12 locations um spread wide and and getting on zoom calls and how did you bring the the team to uh to the the vision obviously at the end of the day comes down to you to make make some decisions and um you probably had a few scenarios going through your head like how do we survive how do we also thrive um in the next moment but how did you bring people together to get onto that that train because i've never seen such a quick pivot and as we talked before the call you were two weeks getting up at 4 30 a.m working to 11 p.m at night to turn around this thing to create this challenge which we'll talk about but yeah how did you get people on the same train yeah, it's a great question. So, you know, and, and by no means did we do it exactly right. I mean, we, we did what we could in a, in a period of time that we were under stress. Um, so on the 15th, on the Sunday, when we made the decision to close our doors, we got on a call with some of our franchise partners, our managers, and we let them know that this is what we were going to do. Um, there was a little fight back. You know, uh, I don't think I think everybody had a different perspective and understanding of how this is going to impact us and how fast it was going to impact us. So we made the stance and I had to obviously make the final call. We made that final call. And what we did is we said, you know, who do we have to take care of first? So my big philosophy is self team operations clients. So let's, you know, uh, from a crisis management, we have to take care of ourselves first. Obviously everybody was doing that, but we had to look at our team second. And from a team perspective, we, we wanted to let them know it was Sunday night. Monday, our doors were supposed to open. And so we got on a call, you know, mm-hmm. 250 to 300 people on a, on a Zoom call and let them know that, you know, what our decisions that we were going to make, you know, and, and what that looked like and how it was going to impact them. And so our first thing was let's buy them time, give them comfort, give them security, because that's the first thing that they're going to, you know, wonder. So we let them know that we were going to pay them for that whole week, that we were going to, uh, you know, dive deep as an executive and a leadership team to, to come up with, you know, our stance and our solution. And for the most part, let them know that they have a week to, you know, take care of themselves. So they're going to get paid, take care of themselves, get things in order, talk about, you know, whether it's their rent, their mortgages, or, you know, get things aligned uh, for themselves while they had that week. And then as a leadership and a management team, we, we evaluated three buckets. So crisis management, which we were all going through globally, how are we going to manage manage and navigate through the crisis, you know, and take care of like Maslow's hierarchy needs, our, our basic needs. Um, and then as a business, the second bucket, risk mitigation. How are we going to mitigate as much risk as possible? So any of our lending, you know, our leases. So a lot of our fixed costs, how do we, how do we reduce as much risk? We can't reduce all of it, but we can reduce a lot of it, hopefully. And then the third question was, do we adapt or do we not adapt? And when we made the decision, you know, we looked at our values once again, you know, and, and we have seven of them, you know, we challenged status quo as one of them. Uh, we build strong communities as a second one. Uh, we find a way, no excuse. So when we looked at our, our values, we're like this, you know, we've lived on the mantra of no excuse for 25 years. We weren't going to start now. And so we told ourselves, like, if we built up the, this, this community for the last 25 years and you know, had clientele that relied on our services for two, five, seven, 10, 15 years, you know, why should that stop? And so, you know, we looked at it best case scenario, worst case scenario, best case being six weeks, worst case scenario scenario being six months. And that was the biggest factor or determining factor that we said, what would it look like if we didn't adapt and make a decision to change our business model and we waited and waited and waited and six months went by and we looked back and we had, a, you know, we had completely dissembled our, our community. We weren't providing the support and resources and services to our clientele. And we, our team was scattered and unsupported. And we told ourselves we didn't want that. So we said, we told ourselves based on that philosophy, as well as leaning into our values that we had to adapt and pivot. And we literally did. We took our, our management team, executive team, and it was, you know, essentially a war room, a virtual war room style. You know, we weren't in the same room. Um, we were in the same virtual bubble. And we listed our priorities, how we were going to do them. And there was four elements that we we wanted to, uh, you know, essentially adapt and pivot towards. And that was the first one was uh, how could we get revenue in the door? We shut our, our facilities down. How could we generate revenue? So, you know, the easiest way to do that was asking for support, like the shop local, 
um, asking our, our customers and clients that fell in love with our services if they could level up their commitment um, by, you know, through discounted services. So we created online packages like a gift card package and, and top up renewal package that they could prepay for discounted rates so we could get revenue in the door to buy us time from a business standpoint. The second one was um, launching our nutritional coaching uh, service. We were about 90% done anyways, but we knew that obviously routines were gonna shift and one of the top things that were gonna shift were people's nutrition and diet and, so, and everybody has to eat. So it's yeah. gonna be a priority and maybe we can help coach them on that. So we want to launch our nutritional coaching. Once again, 80 to 90% already complete anyways. So it, was, it wasn't a big pivot. It was just a matter of you know speeding things up to, to get it to market. The third one was our primary product, which is personal training. How do we actually, do we continue to provide personal training and how do we pivot and adapt to that? And we looked at, you know, five to six, um, you know, uh, guiding principles. It was, you know, understanding your target audience, the four P's of marketing. So product, place, price, promotion, and then the speed of which we do it. So number six, and uh, we evaluated those things and we said, yep, we can deliver, you know, in-person, personal and training just virtually. So products the same, price and promotion is relatively the same, but how we distribute it, the place has to change. So we 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 looked at that. And the fourth element and product that we looked at was how do we keep our community together? So we launched a, a private Facebook group and fight Facebook community, which we never had before. And uh, it was a positive spin around how we could band together around something so um, fear-based and, and a level of uncertainty to provide support, motivation for everybody. And so we created the, the Beat the Bug Facebook community. So, you know, those are the four buckets that we looked at um, to launch and pivot towards. And then it was just the strategy on, on which we, you know, um, we took to, to execute that. Mate, that is uh, some wisdom bombs right there. And um, obviously, I said I'd package this up into a bit of a showreel. And I think the showreel is 12 minutes, which is how long we've been talking for. Um, appreciate it, man. And as I said before, the call, obviously, um, a lot of viewers uh, are in America, but um, down this part of the world, when I looked at investing in health and fitness back, back in the day, it was very much crystal ball gazing at what's happening in North America. It tends to be the leading place on when trends come out, um, whether it's uh, group fitness or 24 hour gyms, et cetera. And the, we've seen explosions of anytime fitness and other brands down this part of the world. Love to kind of, and to be honest, we had a conversation around the, um, what's gonna survive and what's gonna thrive out the other side of this is what is the future of health and fitness. And I think, as you said, a lot of people have been trying to do this streaming online, bringing things virtually but no one really truly owning the space, but you you were literally forced into bringing that um, work to life, like the 90% of nutrition coaching to finally bring that to life, to be able to bring community really together, but you've had it offline. How do you take it online? Where, where do you think the future of fitness is, or if we're having a champagne moment in 12 months time um, with Innovate Fitness, what is that in 12 months time? Because I think you're, your, your band of six weeks to six months, let's all face it, it's it's pushing out the other side versus the six weeks. I don't know how you feel about that, but yeah, keen to get your thoughts on. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what we're seeing, obviously, no one knows how long this is going to last and there's going to be waves of it. You know, that's what they anticipate. Um, but I think at the end of the day, behavior is going to change, you know, for a very long period of time, whether that's forever or whether that's the next two to three years and how we consume things, how we interact with people, you know, the reality is behaviors are going to change and shift and it's not going to be a V. So I don't believe that the minute that, you know, whether a health authority or someone gives the authority that everything's good, we can go back to the way we were before, that it's going to, our doors are going to open and there's going to be a lineup out there. You know, so when it comes to health and wellness, you know, I think connecting virtually is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a, a, a chosen path or a chosen path for many people. Um, it's not gonna be for everyone. I think there's gonna be, you know, a, a, a segment of the population that wants to give hugs and there's gonna be a, a segment of the population that are gonna, you know, slow play the hugs. And it's the same yeah. thing with fitness. There's gonna be a, there's gonna be a percentage of the population that are gonna be just waiting for our doors to open and to have social interaction and to, you know, get fit and active again. And then there's gonna be a series of, of or a percentage of, of people that, you know, will slow play that. 
either way, virtual and online training is going to going to stay just like conference you know, video conferencing is going to is, is here to stay. The reality is that many corporations and operations are actually realizing that, you know, effective meetings don't have to be in person. It can be virtual and they're going to probably cut back on some of the costs of of business travel, you know, sending their executives around the world or to major cities to have to do deals or to have meetings when they don't have to, you know, it saves time, saves money. It's more effective, more efficient, you name it. And we're seeing that too. Like already people, we have about a 30 to 35% adoption with our existing clientele in the first week. In the wow. first week, yeah, we've we've already recouped about 30 to 35% of our revenue um, in the first week we launched this. And a lot of people are saying, man, that was harder than I thought it was gonna be. It was more convenient than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't have to drive to the gym. I didn't have to have a shower after, you know, in, in someone else's shower. So I think there's going to be convenience there. And I think there's going to be um, an adoption for sure that's here to stay. I also think for our business, you know, from a champagne moment, we're not geographically bound anymore, right? So right now we have 12 locations in 12 geographical regions. And unless you can access us in your daily life, you know, so therefore within five kilometers of where you live and work, you're probably not coming to us. You're probably not working with us. Well, now, not only are we not geographically bound, you know, we're essentially global. And it's it's essentially on demand. You know, wherever you are, whenever you are, you could book in with a trainer. And whether you're on the road for business travel or whether you're a stay-at-home mom that previously were limited based on support in the, in the home life, you might have not accessed us because we don't have childcare. So... Mm -hmm. You know, you might have been restricted and now, you know, when the baby's napping, you could come in and have a workout in your gym or, or in your garage and, and, you know, it's it's accessible. So what's, what's you know, you ask about a champagne moment. Um, I think a year from now, I think from a business perspective, I think our revenue online will be equal or more than what we produced in our studios for the last 20 years on an annual basis. No, it's safe to say that um, this little crisis we're going to is just a great catalyst for the excitement um, of uh, of chapter two of Innovate Fitness, right? Yeah, I think it's the silver lining. I mean, I think there's things that, you know, force us to to get things done, like the nutrition coaching, but I think also allowed us to explore a whole nother, you know, um, opportunity. And, you know, in our in, in in the health and wellness space, there's brands, you know, and great brands, you know, in, in group training like F45 and Orange Theory and Big Box is, you know, 24 hour fitness, crunch, uh, you know, Equinox, Soul Cycle. You know, there's there's some great brands. And you know, in our business, in the personal training space, you know, ourselves, ultimate performance, like, you know, there's brands, but online from a coaching perspective. It, there's a bunch of independents. So it's it's very fragmented. There's not strong brands in, in the online space. Um, in personal training, that is. Obviously, nutrition, precision nutrition is is a great example of, of a, a brand that exists virtually, but personal training, there isn't. And, you know, we're excited to bring, you know, the the experience, the education, the, and the, the depth of our brand online um, and provide access to everybody globally for that. Well, just the accessibility, as you said, like, obviously, I travel a lot, obviously, being on a little island down the, the bottom ass of the planet, it's literally, you have to jump on a plane 10 hours to get anywhere into a lot of the fitness that I enjoy are, are gyms and trainers and uh, thought leaders that are in North America, and you didn't really have access uh, to that to now be accessible anywhere to be able to tune in. Um, accessibility, a personal training was always looked at as like, it is some people for me it's one of the most important investments financially and time wise but some people it's a nice to have like if i've got surplus income i'll invest it but the first thing to go potentially when money is tight is personal training but to be able to make it now virtual and accessible um and i think that's really really powerful so and well, I think we're going to reduce our barriers too so you know, another thing that it forced us to do is is look at and evaluate small groups. So three on one, four on one, you know, and now, you know, we're able to as by the end of the, this week, we're servicing three on one, four on one, five on one. So whether you want to get together with your mates and, and have a, a virtual training session and get together or two couples want to train together, there's a there's an element of this um, 
the response to the COVID-19, which is self-distancing and self-isolation. And now we can connect people with a cause. We're working with, with companies that, you know, have never worked remotely before and they want a meaningful reason to get together besides just business meetings. So yeah. now there's companies that are contacting us going, Hey, can you, can you do a 200, 300 person, you know, virtual class? And, and we're able to do that. So, you know, super excited by that, reducing the barrier, connecting people. You know, I, I think, I think we have to socially distance ourselves, but we don't have to isolate ourselves. I think we can do it virtually and, and we're able to do that and, and, um, and reduce the barrier for people to actually get the benefits that personal training can provide. Well, this is the exciting uh, time for humanity because everyone is going on about obesity and health and fitness. And uh, I've never seen so many people, like obviously in New Zealand, we're, we're really ice, um, four weeks, it's locked down, everything's closed except for the supermarket. So literally you, you stay at home and, and I've started cooking meals for the first time um, and being able to get out and walk and get in the steps, like everyone is leaning into, well, the majority of people are going, well, what can I use this time for? Well, mm -hmm. I can use this time to get walking. And the whole thing about not being stuck in traffic for an hour each way, each yeah. way to one, to get to the gym and then to work, to be able to go, well, you know what? I can get out of bed and, and have my protein shake and and get a workout. And, and then now to know that you can do it because, yeah, group fitness and CrossFit and F45 and these other things around the community coming together and getting the high five. Now to be able, as you said, the three or four or five on one through Zoom to yeah. still feel like you're working out together that was the only tipping point that I was like, oh, that's kind of missing. Obviously, it's great to, as you said, there's still going to be huggers and people want to get into the gym and see people sweat. But um, to be able to connect with people and train with you in Canada and, and Sarah and, and Melbourne yeah. at the same time, freaking powerful. What, what's, what's missing in that techno, uh, technology play to really make that like gaming's got it right. Like you can get on a PlayStation and you can play whatever game it is, FIFA with six people and you can have interaction. What is needed right now to truly make that four or five on one um, as good as it could be? That's lacking in Zoom right now. Yeah, so it's, it's a great question. So what people don't understand is that we actually had the choice of using some of the existing video conferencing platforms such as Zoom or GoToMeeting or Teams. And yeah. in eight days, we actually developed our own proprietary software. So we had developers that created um, our own software on the same back end as Zoom. And the reason why is this, is, and people don't realize this. Number one, um, Zoom and any video conferencing is, is designed for chest up, right? Yeah. So when you're training and working with a coach, you, you don't just look at the chest up. I mean, some guys might go to the gym <laughs> and, uh, and work out only the chest or the shoulders, but at the end right. of the day, you got to see full body. So that's that's number one. Number two, the interaction, the screen, most video conferencing uh, tools out there provide the exact same view for everybody. So there's a primary view. Usually someone speaking is, is front and center. And then there's, you know, obviously um, different boxes for everybody that's participating in the conference. But everybody sees the same thing. And from a coaching perspective, the view that if I'm the coach and you're training with you and your couple of your mates, the view that you guys see is different than what I want to see. I want to see you and three others equally split across the screen so I can see you and see how you move and coach you because it's a two-way interaction, right? It's like I'm actually providing you with coaching, accountability, you know, and 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 cues and, and corrections. For you, you don't really need to see exactly what your mates are doing. You want to see them and interact with them, but you want to see me on a primary view. So the viewpoints are different for what role you play. And so that's, that's you know, number two of, of you know, some uniqueness of, of why we had to develop our platform. And then the last one was scale. So if we're going to have 250 coaches providing services, whether it's three, three training services or three to five to eight a day, you know, how do I know who's training who, when they're training, what that looks like, you know, payroll items like that, you know, let alone the administrative headaches of them sending out links to their clients and making that mistake and user error and you know and so we we developed this platform already in eight days that have all those functionalities that now we can we can um yeah scale from there and and you know we're looking at ways to integrate heart rate monitor we're looking at ways to integrate a group chat we're looking at ways to you know all those things like gamify it just like what you mentioned in esports so that now it's there's a competitive nature too right i think that's gonna be important 
Mate, what what didn't you do in two weeks, man? I, I would have loved to. I would have loved to seen the virtual webcam and put that into a reality TV. I didn't sleep. Show. The, I didn't sleep. The, the, the great pivot, and it's broken into eight episodes. That's how Innovate Fitness pivoted. Um, but we had a conversation like you've got to continue to iterate right now because everyone is pivoting, and there's this amazing amount of pressure. Um, whether it's what you look at on the screen, the news, everyone is doom and gloom and you have to pivot um and as you said you've got two choices if you litigate risk and you can just sit it out um or you have to because you, you've got these fixed costs that are still coming in mm -hmm. so what would be your last words of advice for any business owner small to medium-sized business owner um that is trying to one just get on the life raft right now and two be able to thrive out the other side so what would be your, your lasting wisdom pieces right now? Yeah, some knowledge bombs. Um, a, you're not alone, right? I mean, we're all in this together, right? And and what we've seen, we've seen globally that we've, you know, banded together in certain forms. And it doesn't mean that we can't do that from a business perspective. So um, number one, knowing that you're not alone. Number two, everybody reacts to this differently. Any kind of crisis or fear, you know, a fearful situation. So, you know, understand that we can only control what we can control. Um, a lot of us don't know even someone that has COVID-19. So don't let your, your nervous system override uh, what you can do. Don't get in a state of fight, you know, fight, flight, freeze. Um, we, you know, being paralyzed by this is not a good thing, although it might happen. So when you can recognize that, take a step back, you know, introduce the breath work and, and really relook at it. And I don't think, I think there is an element where speed is important to adapt and pivot. Um, especially if you have fixed costs, if you reduce all your fixed costs and you don't have any risk and you're not, you know, you've mitigated all of that, then take the time. Like there's no, there's no race. Like this is a marathon. So, you know, I, um, my last piece of advice is know that this isn't going away. Yes. It's important to, um, get ahead of the pack. I look at when I race marathons, it's like, you know, the faster you can get ahead of the pack, the easier you know, the easier it is because you don't have any elbows or knees or congestion. Um, and so there is an element where if you get ahead of the pack right away, um, you know, it, it, it's there is it is frightful because you don't see anybody ahead of you. You don't know who's setting the pace and what that looks like. But at the yeah. same time, there's less noise and less distraction. And so um, don't rush if you don't have to. But if you have to try to get ahead of it, like try not let it to paralyze you ask for help, lean on the community, lean on your support network. You know, Steve, you're, you're, you're one of those guys that have created a great community yourself. And, and, you know, there's no shortage of information or people that want to help out. Um, don't be scared to ask and, and, uh, and do what you need to do. Lean in, lean in on the opportunity because there is going to be opportunity on the, you know, on the other side of this. I think, yeah, putting your, I appreciate that, man. And it is, as you said, it's uh, not a race because yes, it, it is a race to beat the virus and get it down and get the levels down but the actual compounding impact of the economic and all that sort of stuff is is going to be a marathon so um i liked your analogy and, and yes i've run a marathon as well and you don't want to be stuck 20 30 100 meters back trying to to get through um dodging people and if you can just put in that quick sprint to get out into clean air um and then run the marathon it's a shitload easier so yeah. um Thanks for, um, thanks for the analogy. And on to um, beat the bug, the challenge, because we all need accountability sometimes, especially when we are isolated, especially me. Yeah. I'm by myself. Sarah's in Australia. My kids are a K up the road that I only see every week. Um, accountability is key and community um, is powerful. So there's beat the bug. Let's just have a chat about that right now. And um, can people still jump onto it now um, from anywhere in the globe? What yeah, is it? So we create a private Facebook group. It's private, um, yet it's free. So all you have to do is, is uh, you know, find it on Facebook. It's called Beat the Bug Fitness Community. Um, in a very short period of time, we have over 2,000 people uh, participating and engaged in the platform. You know, and, and it's it's providing, you know, structure, support, motivation, you know, positivity around wellness at this time. We have a challenge of the day that just keeps people engaged and, and motivated. Um, and then we have, you know, a series of, of resources such as mindful meetups. Um, you know, we have some experts that are coming on and sharing their wisdom around meditation, mindfulness, 
you know, and, and everything in between, you know, in terms of physical fitness items like that. So, you know, it's a, it's definitely a community there for, for people to access and uh, it's open globally, obviously um, check it out, beat the bug uh, fitness community. And, and we also, as a resource, one of the resource element to it is that we have a 30 day program that you can sign up for. So it's 199. It starts when you start, it's a 30 day program filled with, you know, a, a d- well-designed thorough fitness program that includes daily fit tips, nutritional tips, habit forming tips, and, you know, 30 days of structured workouts. So that if people need more structure than just a private group and the motivation from a private group or the support network from a private group, if they actually need some sort of program to follow, um, you know, you can sign, you can find it right through the Facebook community and, and sign up for 199. And to be honest, yeah, out of the 199, $99 goes towards the COVID-19 relief fund that we set up too. So. Oh, what can man, everyone doing their part and, um, yeah, just appreciate the, the 30 minutes one as, as a mate and also a business owner that's truly leading the way in the, in the pivot, um, especially in the health and fitness industry, but any business can take an, or any human can take a lot out of this and how to pivot. So, um, thank you so much, um, Curtis, and, um, we will be, um, sharing a few links after this and um i'll be trying to wrap in a bit of a blog post about all that wisdom so thanks man appreciate it thanks for having me